learn how to use these materials because if not, uh, if, you don't, if you don't learn these things that I teach you, for you means uh, you, I waste a lot of money and this thing you don't want, okay? So I will explain you another couple of things that uh, are very important for working with that and then I will start to show you something uh, in real, okay? Allora, uh, we talk about polyurethane, I talk about uh, expanded polyurethane, uh, water, heat, uh, and so on, uh, expansion, blah, 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 time, you remember? Okay. <coughs> allora, polyurethane, I told you, it is, uh, uh, I, I say it a lot of time this thing because it is very important. A and B make polyurethane, different material. All the other is just transformation of material from a state to another. Epoxy. Epoxy, as I told you before, react with amina. Uh, probably it's written in a wrong way, but so I, I always remember you forget how to read it in the right way in English. Uh, but it's, it's, the sound is that one, okay? Uh, epoxy. Why it is used? It is used because uh, it is easy to produce it. It is uh, very easy to find around. It is used a lot, a lot <coughs> in buildings, in architecture. And everything is architecture. Uh, it means a lot of quantities because your, you, your mind is set on meters to cover, meters to make. So, you use a bunch of material. And when you make a bunch of material, the cost goes down. That's why it is so easy, so spread, and so developed, because a lot of people say, okay, why so many people use it? What, what I have to offer to the market to make them buy my resin? So they make a lot of improvement on it. Uh, actually, for example, the amina that are used are all Voc and Ross. Voc and Ross are uh, two things that just means that they don't make exhale, they don't exhale gases in the time that can be poisonous for the, for the people. Uh, now they use uh, water. The problem is that, as I told you before, solvent works better. Re uh, water doesn't work so good, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, they are a little bit less resistant. When you use a certain high level, uh, you recognize the high level re epoxy resin because it's expensive. So it's double, triple than the usual ones. But uh, uh, <coughs> the, usually they are uh, cheap, very, very cheap. Uh, what is important to remember about this resin? It is about heating. Uh, the reaction of this resin uh, can be um, very, very, very uh, warming. Warming means that it can go uh, 300, 500, 600, 700 degrees. The problem is say, okay, but I will not touch. What's the problem? The problem is another. The problem is that sometimes the resin can have a reaction so strong, so heat, that heat produces gases by itself, and the heat makes the gases burn. It is so-called chemical fire. The chemical fire is the worst things that can happen. If any, in any moment you are making a reaction, and you see that the, the resin you are putting in your, in your mold or in everywhere you are mixing it, start to make gases open and get out, okay? And don't, don't put water, don't. Sand, everything's like sand. If you have plaster, put it plaster, or if you have some kind of inert powder like that, put it. Don't put water, never, because the reaction, it is uh, usually very strong. The epoxy is a crystal, okay? When you think as, you know, crystal cubes, etc. what happens? You put water, it reacts like a real crystal, it breaks, it explodes, and makes little shrapnels that when it gets in your skin, uh, get poison. So it is dangerous. Just, you just put some, uh, some sand and that's all, it's finished, okay? or you can take your clothes, you put it over, etc. but never put immediately water or something like that because the reaction is very bad. Uh, about uh, and other, other problems with the epoxy, you don't have it, except the fact that if you work and it goes on your skin, uh, 
can give you uh, in the long time a reaction because of the amina. Okay, so it's better always getting covered. If it happens that you get uh, wet uh, by raising uh, alcohol, alcohol is the cheapest and best solvent for all the resin, even for silicon. Don't use acetone, don't use a strange things, a super solvent. You don't need it. You have <coughs> alcohol, you put it on your hand, clean it, that's all. You finish, no problem. You make it immediately and you can cl you clean everything with the alcohol. It's super cheap uh, and works for everything. It's the best solvent you can, uh, you can use. Um, epoxy. Uh, Usually it is a very low resin. I know that you think, okay, but there are the, you know, the, the two cartridges that you put it in, uh, as a glue and five minutes, they became immediately hard. Yes, it's true. But uh, uh, you can, it is a kind of resin that you can use it as a glue in very, very small quantities because the reaction is so strong, so high temperature that can be controlled only in little quantities. Don't even think to make, uh, oh, I will take, uh, one of my students did it. Uh, he take 10 of these cartridge, put it all them together, and he, because he wanted to make a super fast uh, piece of table in resin, it takes five. It was so nice, we, go, we have to go out from the university, it was calling to police, it was a mess. <laughs> don't want to think about it. And uh, so don't, don't do that kind of experiments, okay? Buy the right material for the right work you have to do, okay? Uh, they are very, very low, low in time, and they use it uh, usually when you make transparent things, uh, you use this one. Another, another nice thing that they have is usually a normal epoxy of, uh, that needs uh, 24 hours for uh, hardening, so usually have at least uh, one, sometimes two hours of pot life. It means that you have one, two hours for make everything you want. You can put sand in it, you can have a lot of things, because epoxy usually reacts, doesn't react with anything. You can put, uh, you can pee inside of it and it will, it will uh, react normally. It became a little bit yellow maybe, but it reacts anyway. And that's why it is used for, uh, for uh, um, uh, materials like Corian, etc. It is very easy to use, it is an oil, it is like an oil, and uh, doesn't smell, mm, doesn't, it, is not, uh, it doesn't ruin uh, materials, you can make this in this one, or you can do it in everything, and, uh, uh, but remember that it is a natural glue, <coughs> so it will stick to everything. If you let it uh, on, some, uh, on some surface for enough time, then will be very difficult to take it off. The best way to take it off without destroying everything is using a, uh, something warm, you know, air guns. You just make it warmer, it became soft, and you peel it off. Don't try to scratch it because usually, if you make it, for example, on a surface like that, it's very easy that it peel off all the surface because it's very, very strong glue and uh, have a, um, it is strong, that's why it is used for, uh, for, paper, for, for floors, yeah. for floors. And uh, it is used also uh, for in, uh, when you make englobements. You know, you make uh, that, and for example, you, it's classical to use it with little animals inside of resin that you can see, etc. The problem is that in the long time, they can become uh, yellow. Okay, so if you make a prototype and you have just to show it off, usually you don't, you don't see the yellow until some month. In the long time, it became, you will see it. So the trick, when, when you have something that you want to show off and you don't want to spend for a anti-UV, no yellowing, blah, blah, blah. The difference is 10, 10 euros kilo, 60 euros kilo, just to make you understand, okay? And the, the trick is you just put a drop of color inside. And you can use enamel or uh, uh, colors for, um, for glass. It's very cheap. They are solvent. It's one of the few things that are still with solvent. And so you can put it in every resin, even in the polyurethane, because there is no water at all. You can use it for make shadows, for make, 
you just, for example, you just put a little drop of blue inside of your transparent resin, blue, yellow, tend to green, our eyes see it like a kind of uh, light blue. The light blue, we, the perception of light blue of our brain is white. For example, classical trick is that if you, for example, if here there is a window and this little corner, I want to, to show them very, very white, I will make white the two, uh, the two walls and inside I will make it with a very pale light blue. Our eyes read them as white. Uh, when you, for example, when you have t-shirt, white t-shirt in cotton, you think they are white, they are not. There is a special uh, material that uh, it is um, uh, a whitening that goes on the surface of the cotton and uh, turn the light uh, through the blue. And the blue, with our perception is white, that we see our t-shirts white. In reality, they are gray. And uh, <coughs> just to let you know, in the, all, all the, uh, the cleaning product that you use to wash uh, uh, clothes, uh, there is this pro product uh, because uh, it goes on the surface of the cotton and make it become whiter and whiter and white. So when you see your clothes perfectly, your shirt perfectly white, uh, it is because uh, kind of painting, <laughs> okay? It is not real white. It is clean, but it's not real white. Actually, there is the, the new developing is a new resin that have the capacity to really paint, uh, to repaint uh, the the fabric and make it incredibly white. It is the uh, uh, development of uh, the last uh, six months, so it's uh, another use of of, uh, of the resins. Uh, allora, epoxy it is used for big sinks, uh, for transparent sinks, for cheap sinks. Acrylic. Acrylic is used since a lot of time, a lot of time in everything is related to teeth because it's super resistant. Because this is a material that by itself, by itself doesn't yellow, okay? That's why it is used for plexiglass or that kind of materials that doesn't yellow because uh, uh, this is a material completely free from uh, I don't want to go on chemistry. Uh, there, there, is a, there is just, there is a material inside all, all the other resin uh, that is, uh, it is a so-called uh, aromatic ring, okay? Just to, this is just to let you know. Imagine that this is a ring with the molecules, okay? During the time, the UV from the light uh, breaks uh, these uh, this contacts between the molecules and the result uh, is that you see yellow, okay? This kind of materials, acrylic, doesn't have it. Does not have the aromatic ring. It is a so-called pure aliphatic. When you see in a <coughs> resin that is pure aliphatic, it means that it doesn't yellow. For your retain epoxy, they exist aliphatic, pure aliphatic, means it doesn't yellow. Means that it doesn't yellow, but means uh, that uh, okay by two, by three, by four, by five. Okay, the most is aliphatic, most pure, much more cost. Became very very expensive. Uh, acrylic, acrylic, as I told you, use it for nails, use it for hairs, uh, for the color. It is used uh, for tears. Uh, it is used for it is used for bones. Uh, I helped, uh, when I was working with uh, bioengineers, uh, I helped to, to develop uh, a, a, a kind of synthetic bone because sometimes when you have accident, uh, imagine that uh, you, are, you are at work and then, bam, some concrete comes on your bone and make it in little, little pieces. Uh, the easiest way is to cut the bone up and down and to make uh, something to let the, the bone grow. And uh, with the acrylic, uh, we make a, a special molecule that uh, uh, make a kind of structure like the bone 
and uh, the, the, the calcium goes on the surface and let it to rebuild completely your, uh, your bone. The nice thing about acrylic is that acrylic doesn't react with our body <coughs> in anything. So you, you can put it in every part of your body and that happens. For example, it is used a lot, uh, uh, you know, when, um, uh, not, when you go in the tattoo shop uh, and they make uh, little horns uh, under your skin uh, or you put things under your skin and you can see, uh, for example, crosses under the skin. Usually they are made uh, or in surgical steel uh, or in acrylic. Uh, because you can, you can make a cut, put acrylic, close the cut, uh, it stays there. Nothing happens. It doesn't react, so that's why it is used so much. Acrylic uh, plexiglass, something interesting is that this is a real crystal. It means that it's much more transparent than glass. Because you know that when you buy, when you go to your mother with his bohemian crystal, super, etc., never explain her that, I'm sorry, mommy, but this is not crystal. Because crystal does not exist. We call it crystal, but it's not. Because uh, maybe engineers know that glass is not a solid. It's just a kind of, forgive me for explanation, but it's kind of solid gel. The molecules of glass are moving continuously, okay? It is a super, super dense fluid. It is a fluid, it's not a solid, okay? So uh, the glass is, uh, we, we call it crystal because we give, we put it in oven, we give more energy, the molecules became much more stiff and we see it, uh, uh, it started to, to sing when you touch it, etc. but it's not a real crystal. Plastic. Acrylic, it is a real crystal. That's why it is so strong, that's why it is so transparent, that's why it doesn't yellow, that's why it is such a, a fantastic material. Um, it is, allora, the, this is funny, funny thing about this material is that the cost changes a lot uh, depending on where you use it. Because uh, uh, I, I don't know if uh, you have already paid, uh, but if you see the, the face of your father when they have to pay the dentist after they make uh, your cavity with raising, you see, <laughs> usually the, the father dies because it is 300, 400 euros, etc. But when you buy enamel, you will not pay 400 euros. You will pay three euros when it's, and it is already too much. It is exactly the same. When you go and you make uh, your French uh, with your new super square, super tight nails, uh, it is exactly the same that you have your, exactly, exactly the same resin. The only difference is that the resin for the dentist has been made in a white chamber. So they say it is absolutely not uh, contact with bacteria and something else. Usually, until you open it. The dent is open and let it there, so everything happens inside of it. But it is exactly the same material. Where you sell it, it costs more or less, depend, depend of the use. Um, do, you, do you know what is Corian? Mm -hmm. hmm? Especially designers. Which one of you know Corian? One. Only. Wow. <laughs> One, two. Okay. Allora, Corian, Corian, for example, is a material developed by DuPont, uh, made uh, of acrylic. It is super expensive. Super expensive. Uh, it costs one meter square, uh, cost around uh, one centimeter, one meter square, cost around 200, 300 euros. And uh, it is made by one third of acrylic and plexi and two-thirds of uh, powder, aluminum powder, alumina powder. Mix it, it became strong, and they sell it. It is one of the first composite materials that he uses for this kind of things. Uh, and it, it, it became incredibly, uh, incredibly expensive. Now, after, I will show you how to make it uh, with just a few euros, exactly the same. What, what is it used for that makes it so expensive? Uh, nothing, because it was the, the first one, and uh, this, it's very funny, because I have been in the presentation of Corian, and uh, it was funny. 
because they say, okay, imagine that uh, use, it, use it for the kitchens. Uh, we make uh, a board for the kitchen. And can you imagine when you come with your coffee and you put it over it, it will leave the sign of cafetiera. And if you put some wine, you have a stain. If you put some vinegar, you have a better stain. And if you cut something, you have a lot of cuts on the surface. And we say, so, so what? Say, but we call, you call us, DuPont, we send you our technical, it comes. And with the machine, he erases the surface. That means I take some paper and you can do it by yourself. And with just 400 euros, you have your plan perfect. Exactly as before. And it is so strong, this material, that you could park a car over it and it doesn't break. And so, obviously, I asked it, sorry, but I don't know you, but usually I park the car outside. I don't need it to park <laughs> in the kitchen. And uh, you are talking that this is a fucking stupid material that scratches, stains, and ruin, and I have to pay to make it... Uh, to make it uh, to make it brand new. Yes, this is the fantastic thing about this material, mm -hmm. and so that why you spend a lot of money for have it. People go, goes up and say thank you, go bye bye. It's crazy. It's crazy, but it is the, the design world. Okay. It's so the famous because it uh, seems like marble. Oh. It's very it's very similar to stone, but it's let's say plastic stone. Right. Uh, it's very heavy. And uh, when you have uh, large uh, surfaces, it's very nice to see, but actually it's, it's plastic. Yeah, it's plastic. It's plastic with some powder, but because it is pure aliphatic, it is the only one of all this resin that never became yellow. So it is yeah, white for years and years. Yeah. So, yes, so actually it, it's completely white. This, mm. the, the, this is why you pay. Yeah, and it mm. is a little bit transparent. Mm. Because the acrylic by itself it is transparent, and uh, uh, maybe you don't know it, but uh, aluminum is the only metal transparent on little on little uh, in little sheets, but it is transparent. And by the way, it is uh, news about the last uh, two months. They have been developed. I don't know if there is some Star Trek fun here <laughs> that uh, they make the transparent real transparent aluminum. It has been made. We have the first one, aluminum, com metal, completely transparent. That has been made just, if you find, if you go on Google and you, you put uh, transparent aluminum, etc., you will find that it is, uh, has, been, has been made uh, just a few couple of months ago. And uh, it is quite, quite interesting because it is a metal. Okay, looks like glass, but have the qualities of metal. So it can be banded, can be melted. Uh, like normal, but it's transparent. That is uh, something incredible. So, uh, acrylic. Do you know Heimach? Heimach is, uh, is the same. Huh? Alternative, yes. Yeah. Uh, this could be echo. This is a nice, uh, nice tip, uh, nice interaction, because uh, Heimach, uh, DuPont, uh, uh, Corian, uh, um, uh, Lumix, uh, all these kind of materials uh, are exactly the same thing. They just changed the name. Uh, because you cannot uh, put, uh, you cannot make rights on the on the resin and on the powder. So if you have one third of acrylic and two thirds of aluminum, you have Corian. If you make uh, one third 0.5 of resin and two third minus five of other, you you give it the na another name. And you can you register. You the can name. register the name. The name. <laughs> the name. You register the, just the name. Okay. Uh, ah, about something that are very, very easy about names. When you look for materials, for any kind of application you have to do, never, never look for the name. Look for characteristics. You are looking for something that suits to your work. Don't look for characteristics. I always give you an example. When you see, you have, you have a tree, okay? You have the trunk, right? Then I have, how you call this material, or this material? What is this? Wood. Wood, wood. wood right? Okay. Don't be afraid, you can talk. I, I don't bite, not too much. <laughs> this is wood. Sorry. 
What's that? Paper, right? They are the same thing. Trunk, wood, and paper are exactly the same material. When we make in sheets, we call it paper. When we make in pieces, we call it wood. When it is still in the trunk, it is a trunk. But it's cellulose. We just give three different names to three different materials. Names uh, doesn't mean characteristic. It's something that tricks our mind. Because if I say you, can you make uh, uh, a car made of paper? You will say, yes, if you want to die. Or if you want to leave it under the rain, you will not find it anymore. No, it's not true. Because if I say you, can you make a car in wood? Okay, yes, you can. Which is the difference? If I take 10, 1,000 pieces of sheet, of sheets of paper, I put some glue, I obtain something that is stiffer than wood, even much more resistant. Thank you. Chinese, when they, uh, you know the Chinese, that you, even in the long time ago, they were thousands of people, and they have to, to spend a lot of money for their uh, armies. And they have uh, to, to wear the soldiers, don't, and they don't, have ena they don't have enough material, leather, to make chorus, to protect them. They make it with paper. Paper, lac, paper, lac, paper, lac. You can shoot to one of that old armors, and you will not pass through. You have seen in a bunch of movies that sometimes the hero saves himself because he takes uh, white papers or a book, uh, shoot and pam, it absorbs the, the, it works, it's real. It's something that works and it is paper. So never let the name of material trick your mind. Think about characteristics, try to think the material I'm using, from which derives from. Oh, paper, wood. Okay, if I make enough paper together, I will, I will have something like wood. I can make it. I can achieve a lot of results. That's why I wanted to introduce you in the, in, in the world of real materials, like these ones. Composite. 90% of the time, you will not find the material you are looking for, believe me, because it happens to me every day, okay? But maybe that you find different materials that have some of the characteristic uh, you, you need. And why don't put them together? Why don't put them and make composites? Say, yes, okay, of course, but how I know how to put them together, how I can make something so. We have talked about animal. <coughs> when you put animal on your, why you put animal on your, on your nails? To make them uh, seem better, I don't know. Looks better, yeah. yeah. And, and also, not only for beauty, but also, if, if you have weak nails, if you break easy your nails. Uh, yeah, to make the uh, more strength. Yeah. If some one of you have made uh, French with the synthetic, uh, you know that with that you have claws. Okay, there are no more. And you you can you can enter in the in the you can open a box and you feel nothing. You have made an incredible composite bio material because you are using the onyx part of your nails that is strong enough with the resin that get into the pores of our, our, uh, of our nails and they became one new material that have both characteristics of our nails plus the resin. You have made five knives, you can use it. So make a step forward. If I take paper, and if I take enamel for nails and I try to make layers, water and paper, enamel, paper, enamel, paper, enamel, and I get something like that, you will have it something like that, super strong. 
you can make, if, if you want, you can make a try, and you can, you can make a knife. When it's completely hardened, you can just, with some sandpaper, you can make the blade, uh, and you will cut uh, easily, you will cut a, an apple like that, like a razor. So you, you achieve uh, a super strong material. When you have a box, and you put something heavy inside of the box, you use some uh, scotch, okay? To put it around, tape, sorry, in English, tape, Italian scotch. Uh, you will put tape, as, for example, classical, if you want very strong, you use American tape, the silver one. But what are you really doing? Uh, don't think about normal people that think, uh, I have a bag, I put something inside, it will destroy, I will put some tape, that's all. No, you are engineers, you are designers, think in another way, go deeper. I'm making a composite material because I'm using some very cheap material that is the material of the box and I use tape that have super resistance material and I put them together and now I have a new super strength box made with cheap material but with a lot of mechanic characteristics. <coughs> you have made a composite material. You made it a lot of time, this thing, and you never think about what you are really doing. So you can do the same thing. Imagine uh, plaster. If you take a piece of plaster like that, you break it. How can you not break it? Just take some piece of cloth and put it inside. Or take some grass, put it there, put other plaster, and it will be very difficult to break. Or any case, if it breaks, the pieces stay together. Why? Because you put fiber, fiber of cellulose that is very strong. And if you put it in a certain way, the resi resistant to, to this kind of forces, okay, I'm talking to engineers now, will be higher. Of course, sliding forces not. They could slide, but on this direction, it became incredibly strong. And if you put different kind of materials all together, you make them even stronger and stronger and stronger. You have to think this about material. This is the interesting thing about materials, that you have a bunch of easy materials uh, that you can use uh, for make them super, super, super mechanically uh, properties with a very cheap money, okay? Uh, your teacher before shows me one of the robots that you developed with a cover of, uh, uh, of soft uh, expanded foam, okay? You wanted to, imagine that you wanted to make it uh, outside, we were talking exactly before, you wanted to make it the foam outside, but you need something strong inside. Now I teach you how to do it. Take some enamel, you put it on it, and if you make enough layers, it became incredibly strong on one side. On the other side, you have it soft. Go over. If I take my expanded foam, my piece of extend of foam, I put my enamel. Why I cannot put, for example, a little layer of um, uh, glass, uh, glass fiber and then enamel? It becomes incredibly strong. If I make two layers, we can work on it and try to break it. Believe me, you cannot. You can be strong as you want, you cannot. And you spend what? Nothing. Using what you have. Vinavil, vinyl glue. You call it vinyl glue, vinavil, yes. I, oh yes, I worked with it a lot when I was a child. It is a, it is a resin. It is a vinyl, vinyl ester resin with a lot of properties. You take some plaster, you take concrete, you put water, you add a lot of glue, and you have a super strong concrete that dries faster than normal concrete and have also some plasticity because of the glue you put inside of the resin that is plastic and give a lot of new properties. So you see, it's not so difficult to achieve. You are not forced to go in places like my shop and say, oh, I need this resin, this resin, this resin. Yes. Sometimes you can do it because it's faster, it's easier, etc. 
but you can achieve the same result just thinking about what you are, you are doing. You can make a lot of new materials by yourself. Just think about characteristic. If you think about the names, uh, you, you get tricked. Oh no, vinavil, yes, okay, but it's not strong. 90, 99% of all the furnitures are made with vinavil glue because it works perfectly with the wood. So why you, you don't have to use it? It is cheap, it's easy to use, not, not, uh, not uh, harming. It's fantastic, use it. Think about things in a different way. If you want to be different in this market, you have to think different. If you think like all the other ones, you will be all, like all the other ones. Every year the university makes thousands and thousands of people like you. You must be different. If you want to be different, you must think different. Think difference means that you are, must be able to see what is really interesting for you, to see beyond the simple surface of things. This is the most important. All these stuff that I will show you now, they are, they are funny, they are interesting, but I, now I will show you how to make it and you will see it will, will be funny. But you must think beyond it, how I can use it. What I, what I learned, I learned that I can make mixing material. I can make my own material. I can produce my own ideas and I can make it in the best way, in the very cheap way, in the short time as possible. This is the right way of real working, okay? Because if not, it will be just some nice show, nice thing, uh, I, learn, I learn a lot, etc. but it doesn't suit you. It's just pure talking, okay? I want you to, to go over, to go further, because if not, you will be like all the other 2,000 students that every month gets out from the university. If you want to have a chance outside of here, think. Classical, think outside of the box, or think how it is made the box. Usually people <laughs> doesn't, never, you, all, you are so focused that you think outside of the box that you never think about the box. How it is made, what the box, why it is made that way, started to look around, started to ask you why it is made this way. Because uh, you don't need uh, incredibly super high-tech materials. Just learn how materials, normal materials are made. Because if I ask you about, uh, about, uh, about material, you don't use materials. You, you, you have materials all around you, but you don't know how they are made. You have, every one of you have a computer. I'm sure that if I ask you how the body of the computer is made, uh, I don't know if you can answer to me. Probably not. Your shoes, it's okay, sneakers, normal sneakers. But do you know how they are made? Silicon for the mold, sil silicon molds for making uh, the soles, uh, synthetic polyurethane for make the leather. And how the leather, because there is cotton behind. And which kind of glue? They use it. Imagine that every day you make this on your soles. And if you use the classical pace, you know the famous 10,000 foot uh, steps every day, no? That you should make. It means that your shoes every day make 10,000 times they flex. But the glue of the sole doesn't break. If you make it for 10 days, it means that it has been bended 100 times. If you use it for a month, it is 300,000 movements. And maybe that you run, maybe that you jump, maybe that you just play 3,100 times. And it, does, it doesn't break, they work. I'm sure that you never think about it. Think about how strong it is the sole. How resistant is the glue? Maybe you need something for make uh, your robots. Why don't you use the gum, use it for the soles, and don't use the glue, use it for the soles. It costs nothing, you find in every shop. But it's super strong and super cheap. Yes, of course, you can go on my site and buy one of my super, super fantastic polyurethane glue. 
I will sell you for one arm <laughs> because they're a little, a little bit expensive and you can achieve the same with that other kind of glue. But think around about around what is around yourself. How resistant are the materials we use? And we are surrounded with materials. Start to look around yourself. This, this chair, this chair is made by a bunch of materials. Fabric, but also about fabric. If I ask you how is made this fabric, you know it? No. The fabric of your shirt, you don't know how it's made. When you go to train yourself, and you, you put uh, the, you know, that kind of garments that have no, uh, si chiama? Cuciture. Mm. Sì. There, there are all one piece, okay? There is nothing that can scratch, etc. Did you think how they made it? Don't you think it is, could be interesting for you, especially for designers? It means that you can make some kind of fabric with no signs in a continuous tube, in a pie, kind of a pipe, and get shape, super resistant, draining because it takes your sweat and put it outside. But if you have to make furniture for outside, for outdoor, you will go and take uh, some special fabric for outdoor and you, you pay gold for it. Go in some place where they make shirts and say, sorry, I need uh, 1,000 meters of your material. They give it for so cheap money because it is not for outdoor high life class, super luxury furnitures, but it's the same, same ANSI. A lot of times it have much more qualities. Start to think about it. Lenses, polycarbonate lenses. They are made in polycarbonate because they are almost unbreakable. No yellow, no problems, very easy to work. And I can, I scratch it, I can make them again completely, perfectly clean. Why I cannot use this idea, this knowledge applied to my other components that I have to develop? You know what is papier mache? The classical mm -hmm. thing that you learn when you are a child. Paper, you make a little, little, little piece kind of powder, some water, some vinyl glue. Put them together, it became like a kind of plastiline, and it is used for make uh, allegoric uh, um, figures uh, or empty, empty figures of four, five, six meters with very, very few money, super resistant. Why don't you think that you can, you can use the wasting of paper, etc., mixing with something stronger, some resin, for example? and achieve a new material that is made 90% of recycled paper, but with the characteristic of resin that make it super resistant, etc. and you have a new material that you can bend with your hands, you can apply, you can apply, you can apply inside of other, of big molds and have it super strong and empty inside. Why not? And it is something that you use it when you're a child, but you, do, you forget about it. Think about it. Look around yourself. Make a question to yourself. <coughs> how it is made things around me? And maybe it sounds stupid, but go on YouTube. You know how it's made, uh, the program. Sometimes go there. You will get a lot of information. You will get a lot of ideas. And you will have new ways of making things. Compensate plywood. Engineers, why plywood uh, is called uh, compensate wood? How many pieces, you know it is layers of wood, right? How many layers of wood you need uh, to make uh, a real plywood? Minimum number. Why three? You, yeah, because fibers must be 90 degrees when each other, but if you don't put a sandwich of at least three of them, they will start uh, to divide themselves. You don't, you don't compensate, okay? 
it is not important this about the wood. It is important about when you when you work with everything is made of layers, even with the even with the um, uh, carbon fiber, it works in the same way. When you make a boat, there are engineers that study the exact angle in which put the fibers to make the forces work in a certain way. But no one think about it. You must learn also these things about easy materials. Don't spend your time looking for, you don't have to make, you are not Elon Musk, you don't have to make uh, uh, spaceships. You have to make things that are much more here that you can make it. Think uh, around you what you can do with what you have. Cotton and resin, it is used, uh, wasted cotton and resin in layers, it is used in the United States uh, uh, for making uh, the handle of knives. Because, it, yeah, it becomes jeans. If you make jeans, resin, in places like that, uh, it is so incredibly strong that you cannot imagine. And so why not making big pieces of it and cutting it like wood and putting them together? Or if you have your robot to cover it, why you don't take just normal fabric, you put some resin on it, uh, then little bit of stucco and you have super material, super, super, super resistant, super cheap, super easy to make. You can use it. Just take a sock, put it on the, you have to make the, the, the arm of your robot. Take a normal glove of cotton, put it over, raising, maybe with some bendable raising, let it dry, sand it a little bit, paint it and you have it. Easy. But to do that, it's easy to make when you think, uh, oh, I know how to put materials together. I need uh, a shape that can, it must move. It must be resistant enough that I make it 1,000 times, it doesn't have to break. What I can use, okay, cotton, lycra, something like that. But I want to, to have appearance of skin. Okay, I will look for something, some material that is bendable enough. I will put it uh, on it and I will do it. You can use, for example, paintings from, uh, from the cars. The, you know that the car have a lot of vibrations <coughs> and the, it is raised, it is, uh, the, the paint is raising in reality and they sell re, uh, resin that are bendable, especially for trucks. If you put, if you make the pink, the skin color, you spray paint it on it, it adhere perfectly to the cotton and to the lycra, and you have your perfect resin hand with so cheap money. It is very easy, but it is easy when you think about new way of think about materials. If you don't know about materials, I suggest you to go in the shops that sell things from uh, for buildings because they have a bunch of materials like that, super cheap because remember everything is made for building uh, means uh, tons of material and tons of materials means uh, prices go down because you have to buy tons of it. So when you, when you buy one kilo, for them five euros for kilo is wow, we sell it for crazy money, for you is nothing. If you take the same thing from me, 50 because I make discount. If not, believe me, it will be much more expensive. But you can, you can solve the problem going in places like that and using your brain. You, your, your best tool is here. Just learn to, pe to, to pick the right material, the right characteristic you're looking for and put them together. And you see, it's not so difficult, okay? Uh, now, if you want, uh, I will show you some materials in action and uh, you will understand better how does, uh, how does it work or what you can do with that. So if you want to come here, I will show you.